Well, let's go back to the late 1940s when a Berkeley wildlife professor by the name of Starker Leopold was noticing the effect of our way of life on wild places. And Berkeley had just hired a new guy, Paul Needham, Doc Needham, and he was a fish guy. And the two of them got their heads together and they wanted to do something that had never been done before scientifically. And for them to do that, they needed to find a stream. And what they wanted was a small stream that would have these naturally occurring side channels that could take excess flows of water because what they wanted to do was to dam off sections of the creek, divert the flow out of the main channel, and then pump those sections out to actually see what lived in a creek. Well, Starker was politically plugged in. Starker and Needham basically hunted and fished their way through the Sierras, somehow found Sage Hen Creek, and in the winter of 5051, they skied out here with some representatives of the Forest Service and some California state legislators. And that was when Sage Hen was begun. Okay, so Sage Hen is the headwaters. It's actually the start of a watershed. It's about 9,000 acres, and it's got mixed ownership, mostly Forest Service, part private, and working with local land trusts, they've been able to secure several of these private inholdings and convert them into public lands. The last couple of pieces that are in the watershed um, are now affordable, so they're working on the acquisition of those. And so once that's completed, then we'll have this entire 9,000 acre watershed. Berkeley's been here, as I mentioned earlier, since 1951. And so our permit is pretty much for the riparian zone down where the field station is located. Sage Hen is within the Tahoe National Forest on the Truckee Ranger District. And in the Tahoe Forest Plan, it's always been managed as a separate unit in the hope that one day, if Berkeley wanted to expand its presence, would be able to expand into the rest of the basin. In 2005, the Forest Service had its centennial. And we were approached by our forest supervisor and the director of the Pacific Southwest Research Station in 2004 with the idea of, hey, we have an opportunity here to actually turn Sage Hen into an experimental forest. And we said, what a great idea. But we also said that, you know, a lot of experimental forests are pretty much more worried about generating board feet, in other words, lumber, where that's really not what Sage Hen's about. You know, we're, we have spent 60 years, or and then 55 years, trying to understand how this place works. And we said, you know, we love the idea of an experimental forest, but we also think that its purpose should be to basically take what we have learned, try to expand that, and then to use that knowledge to try to return this place to as naturally a functioning system as possible. And they said, that's a great idea. You know, it's the centennial for the Forest Service. This is going to be the centennial experimental forest. And this is a great way for us to kind of rethink the purpose of places like Sage Hen. So a lot of people think that Sage Hen is a pristine forest. Well, it's not. Um, Sage Hen was pretty well clear cut in the 1800s. Um, the timber was used to build the Transcontinental Railroad and then the shore up mines in Nevada in Virginia City during this big silver strike. Um, and as a result, it's pretty much become a monoculture, even aged forest, which provides us some frustrations, but it also provides us a lot of opportunities to learn from that. The watershed, the creek itself, functions very well. It's relatively pristine. And our opportunities are, one, when the public and others come out here, they think they're in a healthy forest. And we're able to say, well, we're not really in a healthy forest. Um, and in my mind, people really don't know what a healthy forest looks like because they probably haven't seen one. And that, that gives us tremendous opportunity to start a conversation on, okay, what do we think we should be doing to get this place ready for the future? And our forest project, I think, is giving us a lot of opportunities there, particularly since we decided to approach it from a collaborative process. I came here in 2001, 
And when I got here, I really didn't know what I was getting myself into. I was told that I was going to be managing a field station, and the field station was languishing. And I was trying to figure out what it is this place really represented. It didn't take me very long to start figuring out, A, that there was this guy named Stark or Leopold who started Sage Hen, and B, this guy was a son of Aldo Leopold. Well, to be quite frank, I had no clue who Aldo Leopold was. And during the first couple of years, I was able to learn quite a bit. And what's amazing to me is Aldo Leopold was definitely thinking way ahead. You know, he was thinking about systems as they should, should be. And then Starker Leopold kind of moved it a little bit forward. And to me, what's interesting is that we have a son who was interested in what his father was saying and actually took what his father was saying and applied it and started making it real. And the other thing that's amazing is all of Aldo Leopold's children basically did the same thing. And that family has the most members of the National Academy of Sciences of any family in the country. Okay, so Aldo is gone. Starker and Luna, who did work at Sage Hen, are gone. And our challenge is to take what they were trying to do and move it forward. And I think that's something that we're actively doing here at Sage Hen. We are working on a number of large initiatives. One of them is a whole new strategy for managing western forests. So we're doing that here. We've got a collaborative process that's been extremely successful. Another large project that we're working on is understanding water when it goes into the ground. Another project is trying to restore the native Lahontan cutthroat trout, which is the fish that's supposed to be here, but it's not. And then we also butt up to a two-lane highway, which is moderate traffic, um, flows through pretty good habitat, and is representative of 300 to 400,000 miles of highway in the United States. And this little short stretch of what we call Highway 89 has probably the best data set in the world for animal vehicle collisions. So our fourth project is trying to understand the relationship between wildlife, their corridors, um, and us. Our last project, our fifth project, is going to help us, I think, engage a much different audience than we're currently able to engage. And that is taking the idea of a long-term art project and coupling that with a long-term science project. And we're working with the Nevada Museum of Art, which has a permanent art in the environment department, and then trying to figure out how to bring different parts of the public in to get them engaged. And the topic is understanding our shifting climate and what it might mean to this and other parts of the world. So I briefly outlined the five major initiatives that are going on here, but there's a lot more than that. If Aldo were here today, I think he'd be comfortable with, with what we're doing and the direction that we're heading. Thanks.